It has now been a year of living through a global pandemic unlike anything else the world has seen in over a century. That being said, the pandemic has certainly opened our eyes to stresses on our healthcare system and especially in the care for women. Once again, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists is bringing together thousands of experts to discuss the latest in obstetrics and gynecology. Stay tuned as we will be covering key topics from the meeting, hearing from leaders in the field, and highlighting organizations working working hard to improve health care for women. ACOG TV starts right now. Today, we kick off our show by hearing from your president, Dr. Eva Chalice, where we learn about her presidential initiative, Revisit the Visit. The idea that inspired the Revisit the Visit initiative is something that I've thought about for quite some time, actually for several decades. The obstetricians and gynecologists are uniquely positioned to really have a significant impact, long-term impact on women's health. And we can do so through a many different ways. And at this time, we're not exhausting all of those ways. So I appointed a task force that would look into this and see if we can broaden the impact on the health of our patients. I believe that we OBGYNs need to evolve our practice in a way that really provides more comprehensive care to our patients. There are gaps in care of our patients and we also are uniquely positioned by being able to see some of the conditions that may develop down the road while they develop during pregnancy. This gives us an opportunity to intervene, to educate our patients and to be able to mitigate some of these chronic diseases from developing. OBGYNs are uniquely positioned to provide such personalized care to their patients because we are trusted source to our patients. We see them throughout their lifespan and we have the ability to understand what conditions they may be facing in the future. In addition to that, we are very disciplined physicians who practice evidence-based medicine. The WPSI, a Women's Preventive Services Initiative, has provided us with tools to implement routine screening for different conditions. We can then implement mitigation strategies or refer patients to physicians who may do so based on our level of expertise. The shift towards complete care of the patients that we care for is really necessary because currently that is not being done. We know there's an issue with access to medical care, but we also know that women who access medical care regularly are not receiving all of the care that they should and that our mitigation strategies are lacking. We have a unique perspective of being able to forecast what may happen in the future. And that is why this initiative is so important. Racism has been ingrained in medicine for far too long. The ACOG board has taken action to change the culture of medicine. Let's take a moment to hear from those that are leading this effort. Racism and racist practices have been weaved into the fabric of American medicine since the beginning. For instance, if we look at American obstetrics and gynecology, the birth of our profession was deeply and painfully intertwined with the enslavement of black people as well as racism. In the 18th century, white male physicians used the bodies of enslaved black women to acquire anatomical knowledge, to pioneer and perfect innovative procedures, and to deepen their understanding of the female body. All of this served to advance gynecology and legitimize American medicine in the eyes of the Western world. So some of the steps that are being taken to address and acknowledge racism in medicine and change the culture of medicine is, is really the first step is actually acknowledging it. I think that over the last year, even though maybe there have been articles in the past and conversations that happened previously about acknowledging racism in medicine, this past year has really shined a light on that. And many institutions um, around the country, many medical boards around the country are really acknowledging how racism has a negative impact on not only its members, but its patients. In order to close some of the gaps in maternal health, I think that 
what we need to do doesn't only happen at the organizational level, but it needs to happen also at our hospital level, department level, in our practice, and individually. And it all starts with an awareness and a recognition. And then of course, the education, not just from the organization down to us, but also to one another, to your partners, to your patients, to the people that you work with. One of the things is also to promote scholarship and research in this area. It's very important that we learn more about this and so and we create opportunities where we can turn this around. We recognize in the ACOG board that racism is a public health crisis and we have the spotlight, we have the power to change. And so because we have that privilege, we recognize that we should use this privilege to, to help our patients. ACOG has been working alongside our members and our partner organizations to change the culture of medicine, address racism, and improve the lives of the patients we care for, their families, and our communities. Our members have led the way. They've led our diversity, equity, and inclusive excellence work group, lending their voices and their leadership to this critical issue. This past year did give us the opportunity to lay a foundation for real change. And we have the leadership of our ACOG members to thank for supporting these critical efforts. To all of our members, thank you for your inspiration and for your ongoing dedication. You will make the difference. For the next few days, we are also going to be highlighting organizations that are at the forefront of gynecologic research. Let's start by taking an in-depth look at the work being done by Spectrum Health, where they offer the opportunity to address multiple health and wellness goals for all women with one coordinated visit. woman is able to come in, have her appointments, but have her providers actually collaborate with one another and take care of the woman on an individualized and specialized basis. Next, let's take a look at the Shades of Blue Project, which is dedicated to breaking cultural barriers in maternal mental health by raising awareness and ensuring action is being taken to break the stigma surrounding seeking treatment in minority communities when experiencing complications after childbirth. Particularly here in Houston, um, we are seeing black and brown women um, struggling with postpartum depression, maternal mental health, um, and they are suffering in silence. No woman should have to suffer in silence. We need more, we deserve more. Shades of Blue is a project that we created to bring awareness around maternal mental health, specifically um, in the black and brown community. That community I can define as not just women, but their families, um, medical providers, right? Uh, business owners. So everyone has a stake in ensuring that maternal mental health gets the support it needs. The energy is there, the synergy to change things, uh, to shift into gear when needed is there. And so that's why this collective of women is most powerful because we do work together and we do make shift happen together. The Women's Health Research Program at the School of Public Health and Preventative Medicine at Monash University takes a holistic approach to women's health research by incorporating psychological and socio-cultural factors as well as biological changes and include women across the female lifespan to provide a life course perspective. Let's take a closer look. 
we undertake population-based research to identify and address the unmet health needs of women right across the lifespan. Importantly, we take a holistic approach to women's health research by including psychological and sociocultural aspects in our studies, as well as biological changes, and taking a life course approach to the study of women's health. The most impactful thing I've done was leading the Global Position Statement on Testosterone for Women. It brought together international societies that may never have worked together before we generated a harmonized global position consensus statement on the use of testosterone in women. She's translated both epidemiologic and basic science research into operational statements and global strategies. She's been an inspiration as a researcher, a teacher, a mentor, and a peer collaborator. Urge envisions a liberated world where we can live with justice, love freely, express our gender and sexuality, and define and create families of our choosing. To achieve this vision of liberation, Urge builds power and sustains a young people's movement for reproductive justice by centering the leadership of young people of color who are women, queer, trans, non-binary, and people of low income. Let's take a closer look. Urge is an organization that builds power with and for young people in service of reproductive justice. We know that young people face so many challenges from anti-abortion restrictions to anti-trans and LGBTQ oppression. And the great news is that young people are fighting back, organizing, and we're working together to build a different world. We are member driven. That means that the young people that Urge organizes are at the core of everything we do. Reproductive justice has a particular role in the current conversations our society is having. We are finally acknowledging the intersections of race, gender, class, and sexuality. And reproductive justice and urge has a really important value and perspective to add to those conversations. I think the work of urge is going to be essential as we strive to protect our democracy, to restore abortion access, and to create a world in which we can truly live freely. Well, that is it for our show today, but we hope that you've enjoyed it. Make sure to tune back in tomorrow as we will have more exclusive material from the 2021 Annual Clinical and Scientific Meeting.